if you are an engineering student here in india or if you are someone who has recently graduated and looking to get their first software engineering job there is a lot of anxiety in the market right now you see the headlines about layoffs you hear stories from your seniors and you feel like the goals have suddenly shifted i'm here to tell you that you're not imagining it the ground has shifted my name is satvik and i'm a software engineer at google and i see this change from the inside so i'm not going to give you generic advice we're going to look at the hard data and we're going to try and come up with an actionable plan that will help you navigate your career through this ai anxiety filled job market so let's get into it first let's look at the numbers because they tell a very clear story now 2025 stanford study on ai's impact found a stark trend since the rise of ai there has been a 13% decline in early career workers in the most ai impacted areas including software engineering it's not a feeling it's a structural shift and this shift is coming by reducing the hiring in entry level positions now corroborating this a 2025 report from a venture capital firm called signal fire showed that new graduates are only 7% of the new hires in big tech firms a figure that's down 25% from the previous years now here in india the story is quite similar For example, Neeti Sharma, who is the CEO of Teamless Digital, stated in the Economic Times that over 50,000 tech jobs are at risk this year while companies integrate AI and automation. So the anxiety is real. The doorway for entry-level software engineering jobs has gone very narrow. The big question is why? The reason the entry-level jobs are getting hit the hardest is quite simple actually. AI is getting very good at doing the work of a beginner. Think about the traditional path of a junior engineer, right? You almost spend the first year writing, you know, simple unit test cases, simple fixing simple bugs or you know, doing some manual automation testing and it was a learning curve, right? The those were the fundamentals of software engineering and you would easily spend a year or two, right, learning them. But today AI can do a large chunk of that work. In fact, a 2025 study from Gartner claimed that by 2028, 90% of enterprise software engineers will use AI coding assistants in almost every day in all of their everyday tasks. And that is a metric that was less than 14% in early 2024. These tools can generate boilerplate code, write documentation in seconds, fix some small bugs, and these were the things that a junior engineer would take hours to do, right? And those were the key learning mechanisms for us junior engineers. Now as a result the value of an engineer has shifted it's not about how many lines of code you can write anymore it's about the complexity of the problem that you're solving they need engineers who can operate at a higher level of abstraction from day one the role is shifting from being just a coder now you will have to be an orchestrator an orchestrator who uses these ai tools to help solve complex problems which ai is not yet matured enough for so the market is bifurcating on one side all the repeat coding tasks are becoming commoditized on the other hand there's a huge demand for engineers who can build with ai in fact a 2025 report from deloitte showed that companies are ready to pay a premium of about 10 to 15% salary hikes to engineers who are capable of building with ai the expectation is no longer just that can you code The expectation is can you code and solve complex problems by using these AI assistant as your daily drivers. Okay, so that's the reality. It's tough and the expectations are different. Now panicking is not a strategy and building the right skills is. So here's your four step road map to stand out in 2025. Step 1, master the unautomatable fundamentals. First, double down on the skills that AI is bad at. AI is a great tool for implementation, but it still sucks at higher level abstract thinking and solving complex problems. So in fact, more than before, you need to be rock solid in these two fundamentals that have always been data structures and algorithms and system design. Now coming to DSA, this was always very important for interviews, but it's now more important than ever. It's about thinking logically and being able to break down complex problems which AI is still not as good as. So that's a human skill that you need to master. Now coming to system design, like this is the backbone of any senior software engineer, right? And this is about how to build maintainable, scalable and distributed systems. And these are things that AI can still help you with, but it can't lead these projects. Second, you have to learn to work with AI, not against it. In 2025, an engineer who does not work with AI, to be honest, they're just slow. Now you need to get good at the art of prompt engineering. You need to be integrating these AI assistants into your daily workflow. Get deeply familiar with tools like GitHub Copilot, Claude, Cursor is another great tool. There are a lot of tools. I'm just picking out names. So the point is that you need to get very comfortable with these tools, and you need to integrate them in your daily workflow. I need you to tell them exactly what you want them to do because you should not be doing any of the small stuff now. 
they should be doing that you need to focus on the complex problems now your productivity will be dependent on your output and your output will be highly dependent on a combination of your skill and your ability to integrate these powerful tools with your work now step 3 build a killer ai focused portfolio right a portfolio of projects is no longer optional right you need to have a good ai focused portfolio of projects that help you uh, and your resume get forward Now here are four projects which I feel are in sync with today's market. Now the first one is the API driven application. Now you need to be able to solve real world problems using the public APIs now that are available for example OpenAI API even Gemini APIs are, and there are a lot of open uh, open source models that are that are available. Okay and I'm not talking about just building simple chatbots using these models right. Think of a real world problem like let's say for example uh, there are a bunch of Q3 earnings that are happening right now for all the tech companies. Let's say you build a financial planner like an analyzer tool that goes through all of those earnings, gives you suggestion on your personal portfolios, etc. So think about those problems and use these APIs to build a real-world solution. Second is the RAG project. Now go a bit deeper and look at the retrieval augmented generation systems that are there. Now this is where you make AI answer your question based on your own data. For example, building a chatbot that just answers question related to a technical textbook or some other data that you provided, right? So look into that. Look into the rag system that are being used as of now, and try to build out a project on that. This demonstrates that you understand how to combine external skills and LLMs, which is a very highly in demand skill right now. Third is the ML ops project. Now this is about showing that you're not just a model user; you understand the full life cycle. Now you could build out a simple machine learning pipeline, right? Like from ingesting data, training that model, then deploying it as an API on Docker. and maybe also setting up a little bit of monitoring on it this proves you're not just a model user you're an engineer that understands end to end workflow and knows how to deploy production ready ai systems now the next one is the mcp server project now mcp is model context protocol now this is sort of imagine this sort of like a usb c drive for your ai models so you build a mcp server for your data for your systems so that an llm can directly connect to your data sources and your external sources and learn on them and you know answer questions to the end client using that information now you could build out a simple mcp server that gives an llm access to your you know repository your local file system and this shows that you know how to build the infrastructure for agentic ai which is the future now just a short tip if you could include a short video demo for each of these projects or any projects that ha- you have in your resume that is a great thing now step 4 you need to develop t shaped skills Finally just being a coder is not enough you need to be a T shaped professional now the vertical bar of this T signifies your technical expertise but the horizontal bar is about your broader knowledge of other domains now this could be product management business strategy or user experience design now according to the same deloitte report and a staggering 83% of engineering students are also pursuing trainings in leadership and management why because when you understand the why behind the product you can make very informed decisions on the how This makes you infinitely more valuable than some AI who can just perform some small technical tasks. Look, the path to becoming a software engineer in India is way harder than it was 5 years ago. The future of our field belongs to problem solvers, the innovators and the architects. It belongs to the engineers who can provide the wisdom, not just the work. So don't be afraid of AI. Learn to master it. Focus on the fundamentals that cannot be automated and build a skill set that does not make you just a coder but a true engineer. If this breakdown was helpful please subscribe to the channel I'll be keep I'll keep posting more technical content I'll bring I'll try to bring more people on the channel who have more technical expertise than me and who've been in the industry for a long time let me know in the comments what your biggest concerns are in the moment and let's uh, get through this together thanks for watching thank you